morning with Ford Parish. I hope you've enjoyed the worship that we had this morning. I'm going to read the readings for you again um, and hopefully that'll give you a chance to catch up. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 18 verses 1 to 15. <clears throat> the Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, if I have found favour in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so that you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they said, do as we'll do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three seas of the finest flour, knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to the servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? they asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am very old? Is anything too old for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid and so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did. You laughed. Matthew chapter 9 verses 35 to 10 verse 8. Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and illness. When he saw the crowds he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called the twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and illness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal those who are ill. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. 
And those were our readings for today that we had in our worship this morning with Andy. I'm sure you know that story of Abraham. It's so beautiful, but it causes us to think. What is our response to the stranger? How do we behave? It's not always easy to react well. I remember our first Christmas at home with our new baby. You want everything to be just perfect, although I don't think that she really remembers any of it. We had different members of the family calling because they wanted to celebrate with us and the new baby. And then there was a surprising knock on the door and I realised we had carol singers on Christmas Day. Well, I'd love to tell you that I invited them in and asked them to share our dinner, but I didn't. We don't always get things right, do we? I didn't even offer them a bit of cake, nothing. Abraham and his wife, Sarah, did a much better job. They come from a culture of good hospitality. They invited the three visitors to stay and eat with them. But this was not going to be a quick visit, a cup of tea and off. No, Sarah started to make bread. Well, I'm not sure how long bread takes to make, but I imagine a good few hours at least. They killed the calf, which would then have to be prepared and then cooked. A meeting which was going to pass many hours of conversation and getting to know one another. How are you on hospitality? Well actually all of this is tough in lockdown or even in easing of lockdown because we cannot share food and hospitality at the moment. We can share our time in a phone call or a text, FaceTime, Skype or Zoom or just the old-fashioned telephone. Give it a go this week. Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. We should give generously of our time, our love and possessions. We never know when we will be visited by angels. I reckon you've probably heard about St Francis too. His life is quite helpful for you and me. He was born in 1181 and he lived in Italy. His father was a wealthy cloth merchant. He grew up to love bright colours, beautiful clothes, beautiful cloth, parties, drinking, women, that sort of life. But one day he decided he should sign up to fight in the Crusades. He bought a horse and off he went. After one day, he felt that God told him to go home. So he agreed and went home. But Francis was challenged by God's interest in him and he started to pray. He had a lot on his mind. He felt incredibly sad that his country had so many poor people and so many beggars. One day, he saw a beggar who had leprosy. He was very moved and drew in close to the man, took his hand and kissed him. As he rode off on his horse, he felt good. He had done a good thing. He looked back to see how the man was, but the man had vanished. St Francis believed that day he had been visited by an angel. He felt he had responded well. Later, he felt God call him again and ask him to visit a local church. He looked around inside. It was a pretty church, a bit tired and worn out, but in the middle it had a beautiful cross. He stood looking for a long time at this cross and after a while he heard God speaking to him. Francis, build my church. Well, Francis thought he meant build this church, so he borrowed money from his father and started to rebuild the churches in the area. But Francis's father was very cross. He didn't want his son to waste his life and use his money in this way. Francis prayed, and as he prayed, 
he wondered whether he had misunderstood God and that what he had actually meant was that he should build up the people of God. He trained to be a monk and then he started a monastery, accepting a life of poverty. We'll have a bit more of Francis later. Jesus called 12 ordinary people, men from ordinary walks of life people like you and me. But then he asked them to go out and do extraordinary things. But Jesus didn't send them in their own strength, but after he had spent time with them, teaching them and training them to do the will of our Father God. Jesus sent them first to preach, to teach and heal to the Jewish community. To the people they were familiar with, teaching them to say that the kingdom of God is near and then to wait and see what reception they received, whether they got a welcome or a rebuff. In fact, later in this same chapter, Matthew writes, if anyone gives even a cup of water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. Well, this week I decided to twin my toilet. What? I hear you cry? Well, yes, I decided that maybe someone in Africa might need a flushing toilet. And more importantly, perhaps, we have provided that village with a water pump as well. They go with our love and prayers. And I only hope that one day someone will know they came with the love of Jesus. We all do what we can to our encourage and support one another. So back to Francis. Well, one day Francis called his novitiates together. They were the monks in training. He said they were going out to preach. Well, the novitiates were very excited, wondering who would be chosen and what wise words they would have to say. Francis set out at what seemed to be a very steady, slow pace. He stopped to greet an old lady and a man they had been praying for who seemed to have recovered from his ailments. He blessed a child and stopped to chat for what seemed like forever with a beggar. Then checking the time, he decided that they needed to get a move on in order to be back for lunch. When they entered the grounds of the monastery, one very disappointed novitiate came up to Francis and asked politely why they had not stopped to preach. Francis quietly responded, it's no use walking anywhere to preach unless our walking is our preaching. Well, what did he mean? Well, like our story from Jesus today, Francis wanted to remind his trainee monks that wise words and well thought through sermons are very important, but so is the way we live out our life and the care that we show for one another. So let me redeem myself slightly. One Sunday, not long after we had moved to Chelmsford, we met a man who was new to that church. We chatted to him over coffee and we discovered that he was staying for a few days in Chelmsford with work, travelling from Australia. We invited him home to lunch. He quizzed us over good places to stay and to cut a very long short story short, we invited him to stay with us. He stayed with us for several days before he returned home to Australia. We exchanged addresses and we didn't really expect to ever hear from him again. However, that Christmas, we received a beautiful book full of colour images of Australia. We didn't expect any thanks. We didn't want it or need it, but it was kindly given, signed by all his family. Well, how do you greet the stranger? Could you tell others about the love of Jesus? Could you be like Jesus to someone this week? Feed the birds, phone a friend, 
tell them one story from the Bible. Give it a go and the love of God will empower you and fill you to overflowing. Freely we have received, freely give. Amen. And I thought it would be nice to finish with the prayer of St Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I may no, not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you enjoyed Tales of St Francis and um, some reflections on God's word. Please join us for Jess's Fall Aid, which will be coming up at half past. And if you're able to join us and follow the Church Talk Zoom link, you'll be welcome to join us for coffee at 12 o'clock. You make your coffee and join us and we'll uh, all chat over a cuppa. Take care, God bless, have a good week.